can't win it. <laughs> What the hell is going on here? Pass me a torch? Overall, can you put overall space? There's two batteries in here. So we are having major power problems. Major. We've lost our whole 12 volt system and that means we can't have our refrigeration on we can't use our toilet we can't use our shower we can't use our water so yeah that's major to us shannon's been on the phone to our electrician um, for quite some time this morning we've checked all fuses and batteries and we've already got solar panels on ordered being delivered to a future address and now he's at the local hardware store here in cooper pd because that's where we still are with no power so Keep watching and find out how it all unfolds. And the worst thing is we can't even keep beer cold. Give these a go, Lee. Surely they'll help. Gotta get power somehow. All right. So we often talk about meeting fellow travellers on the road. We met Gary and Susie when they reached out to us through our YouTube channel. How did you find us, Susie? Well, it was we <laughs> kind of come up with the, the whole idea. We wanted to travel around Australia, but we didn't know how or when we were going to make it happen. Um, and we just started looking at different people travelling and to get ideas. And we found your channel and we loved it because we found a connection with you guys mm -hmm. and um, and then we saw you on the road and it was like there's Camp Weenie and <laughs> it was like we were familiar with the area that you've lived in one of your videos not that we were stalking but <laughs> and we reached out to you guys and it was great because we got together and connected and and then the I remember I remember you guys one of you sent a message through us through Instagram or one of those platforms and yeah it just all went from there yeah, didn't it? Yeah yes and we connected really well so and that, that was before you good. even bought your motor home that's it because yeah. we weren't sure what we were going to get and we were tossing and looking at different options well, I think we knew we wanted a motor home from the beginning because we'd had one we used one before in Canada mm. um, and then we looked at many at the shows like everybody goes to and, and researched a lot online and we liked a Vita um, the finishes were nice uh, you walk in it and it just felt homely and it just felt warm mm. um, and we looked at the many different ranges and I think I always like to slide out because it gives a lot more room and you put the blinds down and everything and it is like this bubble and there's plenty of space to walk around to cook and and if it's rainy there's plenty of space to be stuck inside so <laughs> so it's really good like that and um, 
yeah, the Esperance was the one. We wanted new, but we couldn't get one in the time we wanted and it was just all worked out perfectly. We found the second hand one, only 2021, and it's like brand new. And yeah, it just, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful inside. It goes like a dream. <laughs> yeah. And so how are you finding traveling? Are you enjoying it? I love it. I loved it from day dot, from the first day, just to wake up somewhere different yeah. every day and the simplicity. I think it's the simplicity of just simple food, simple basic clothes yeah. and and not worrying about too much stuff so you've gone into this uh full steam ahead you sold your home to make this happen yeah we did well once the last one um moved out of home and wanted to move to uni she was only 18 so we thought we'd still have a few years back at home but we made the decision that we were ready to leave sydney um and just ready to travel full time and um to see where it takes us and um We'll worry about where we're going to end later on. So I love time. it. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Have you get, had a favourite place? Have um, you been to yet? Well, we just finished up at the Flinders, so I think that was a surprise. I didn't have any expectations, never yeah. do with any place, but just how beautiful and how huge it was, and it, yeah, it was just stunning. Everywhere's beautiful, but this place in particular, I just really loved. Yes. What about um? Do you get on each other's nerves being in a confined, <laughs> confined space? Do you each get your own time? Yes, it does. Sometimes it does. Um, it's good now that we've got a grom on the back so Gary can get on it and go and, you know, have a bit of boy time because um, I do like my time. Yeah. And But it's big enough. The Esperance is big enough so that we've got the bed space, the Luton bed even. He's gone up there at night time and, the, you know, um, we just make it work and you know you have your little needles but yeah of course we work everybody it out. does we've worked it yeah. out yeah. yeah i mean i think by now if it was going to be a problem you would know but <laughs> it's all good you're not turning around and going home just no, yet no not yet no no we're still going ahead <laughs> so what's your favorite um what what do you love what's one thing in there that you just absolutely love um about being in a motorhome or um, your um favorite item in there that you couldn't live without or I must say, <laughs> like, I do love the TV, how it just goes, and then it packs away. <laughs> oh, that's right, because yours yes. tucks down into it. Yeah, that's a really good thing, because we don't have to move it or anything. <laughs> it just, in and out, and for when we do want it, when I do need it, otherwise it's not there, it's not in my face. So it, I think I really like that. Yeah. But, yeah. One thing I have to ask you, because I know what my answer to this is, <laughs> do you use your toilet and all your bathroom facilities, or do you not? Yes. I use everything. Um, I prefer to shower in here because we've got a little thing on the wall that's got the soap, the shampoo, everything. So that's really easy. And I do use the toilet for everything. Uh, the ones and twos, I must say. So um, I'm very lucky Gary does empty it and he's good about it. So that's never been an issue. So yeah. I, it's handy why not yeah yep. same in ours uh shannon empties our toilet i i do get reminded of that every now and then <laughs> when we're complaining about something but um yes thankfully yep. he does um for us girls but living in the van with three girls you know it's yeah. it's a little bit harder for us to you know go about your daily business so yeah we've always used ours um shannon's always of the opinion you know why go to a toilet seat where five thousand people have sat on whereas <laughs> you could use one that four that's have true just sat on. and that's you know it's cleaned and whatever yeah, all the time yeah. but it's handy you know when you're stopping somewhere where there's nothing that's right it's there it's the beauty of it and i think different to a caravan i've got to get out the car got to go out in the back whereas this way especially the weather just walk straight through it's and convenient. it's there it's yeah, so easy it yeah is. everything's it easy oh, yeah. well, we're the same there there you go <laughs> <laughs> isn't it funny you meet people and usually discussions come up about toilets it is it's, it's a, either using your own or dump points or <laughs> it's a basic thing but you'll see people all the time even in van parks everyone please goes tell to me the gary toilet. has gloves for the toilet he does he does <laughs> he's got gloves absolutely and we saw yes that your recent one you got the gloves and he does <laughs> thank goodness yeah that's good not many do you probably noticed that i know and, and shannon i know he said not many people use but yes, he does. <laughs> so you mentioned that when you were deciding which way to go, there's just so many options out there. We recently went to the Sydney Caravan and Camping Show and Avita had, I think they had their brand new Fremantle on display. They had a long reach and they had an Esperance. But I think that the Esperance is the, um, their most popular yeah. um, motorhome. And it was beautiful inside. So when you say the TV pops in and out, I 
know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And there's ones the bed goes up and down. Did you say your? No, you've got the bed over the top. The bed, yeah, the bed we've got the, the Luton bed at the top, um, which we got just. Well, our daughter was travelling with for the start, but just in case, you know, those nights of snoring and stuff, you need a separate <laughs> bed. Um, but it's also storage. So True. we've got fold up bikes that we've put there, and we can put other things up there. So. Yeah. Yeah, you have a lot more storage in yours than ours. Yeah. Nonetheless, we still love ours. <laughs> yeah, yours is a pocket gets us, rocket. <laughs> gets us out and about, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You've got to start somewhere. You, you can't do. always, you know, it's just you've got to get out there and go with what you have, isn't it? So, so. you've been on the road since February? Yeah. So a little while now. You would have come across so many different shapes and sizes, yeah. variants, some in tents, some in motorhomes, it some is. in caravans. It is, and you're always looking, seeing, oh, you know, what, what have they got and what have they got, you know, is this, if, what, what ways better and I think for us it was always better to do a motorhome a caravan just seemed like oh, a, little, a little bit too much fussing around for us and then because we sold everything we would have had to buy a, a bigger car and a new car and then obviously the van and we just didn't want that because we just want to travel around until we're ready to settle and then we're gonna sell so we didn't want to have a big car yep. and a van and all that so, especially with you've got the motor, little motorbike on the, on the back, back that makes a big difference push yeah. bikes as well so you yeah. can get around town and go and yeah. sightsee so it's yeah. quite easy for you guys to yeah. do that like we've seen people obviously that have the cars on the back yep. um, for us that was never really an option we weren't really interested in that but having putting the tow bar on the back and then getting the motorbike yeah and then people have electric bikes and stuff so definitely makes it easier so that you can get around having something extra. and you're going to go all the way around you're planning on going oh, as many places as you can absolutely <laughs> i've said you know a couple of years you know we should be able to see a lot yeah, in will. that time so and this is so comfortable and warm and beautiful so it, it can easily take us all the way no so you guys are, are ready to hit the road again this morning you're heading north and yes. we're heading south yeah and you're heading south it's been so great that we've it been has. able to cross so we're heading up to cooper pd for a few days and then meeting friends in Uluru and then heading up the guts and going around west but we're glad that you could meet up with us we were yeah. really looking forward to meeting up meeting so up with the people that reached out to us yeah. all those months ago uh, to actually meet you guys on the road doing you know I what know. we set out to do and what we love doing it's, I know what we saw you awesome. doing and now we're doing it yeah. and we get to do we it get together to do it. I know it's awesome these were great inspiration for us so it was Aww. got so many ideas from you guys it was great <laughs> hopefully we didn't give you too many bum steers no <laughs> <laughs> not yet <laughs> Susie's got to do the pilot check, she's my co-pilot, check everything inside before we go. And we're off. A team. Good team, yeah. Made a wish. Me too. Well, they do say many a good tune is played on an old fiddle. And here we are with Rich from Van Catmeow. Uh, we actually met Rich in Tasmania during our uh, 2021 lap. And he's doing just that, playing an old tune on a, playing a tune on an old fiddle. It's not actually a fiddle, it's a homemade harp, isn't it? It's a lyre harp. It's a homemade lyre harp, apparently, whatever that is. Pretty clever. This, this was uh, off cuts from my kitchen bench in the van, put to good use. So there you go guys, if you are doing any renovating soon and you've got an old kitchen bench. Let me know. <laughs> turn it into a harp.
next time. See you. I was talking to my electrician back in Sydney about our 12 volt issues. Poor bugger. He kept on telling me how helpless he felt for us uh, whilst we were stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. But I assured him my legendary mate Albie Mangles would have ventured through these parts well before I was even born. No fancy V8 Land Cruisers, no coffee machines uh, or lithium batteries. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he didn't own many clothes. And he never complained. So comparatively, uh, we are still living in luxury. See this photo here? Poor Albie. He did it tough, hey? See? Everything is in perspective. Anyway, we've just driven into a Royal Australian Air Force base, Woomera. It's got to be the biggest Air Force base in Australia, I'm sure it is. Uh, this is where it gets a bit weird. You're allowed to drive around here and take a look around, but we have not seen one Defence Force member anywhere. It's like the place is deserted. And this is where they practice all of their missile launches and, and um, spy drone testing. It's all been happening here since the 1950s apparently. Yep, drones in the 50s. I can assure you there is no chance in hell that I'll be able to fly my drone through here. Anyway, we're out of here. I don't want any more houses on this trip. And missile testing sites gets me a little nervous. Missiles. God. Hi, we're Ella and Marie from Tasmania, and we're travelling around in our Avita Laura. You having a good time? Yep, awesome Where time. Where is off to from here, from Kupapiti? Uh, Kupapiti to Uluru. It's the next stop. Good on you. <laughs> Travel safe. Thank you. So it's one thing taking your motorhome out to Coober Pedy, but how do you take the Coober Pedy out of your motorhome? It gets into everything. You gotta find truck wash bays that have the high clearance tall enough for your motorhome. So come on, I'll show you.
are you doing? I'm motor hunting on a budget. Oh, Shan, you can't be serious. Can you believe what I have to put up with? Yep, pretty much a daily occurrence. And that, my friend, is how you wash a motorhome. We're out of here. We're leaving this region and on our way up to Broken Hill. Uh, our batteries. Mm. Don't I go there. I think I have found the problem. I'm not sure. Stay with us. Stay with us and we'll let you know next week. We should have it sorted Fingers by then. Crossed. I hope. We're just limping along here, guys. <laughs> okay. See you in Broken Hill. Back in the New South Wales, but the very, very corner of it, there's one special reason why Broken Hill is calling. And that's myself and a bunch of guys. We're getting on motorcycles and riding across the Simpson Desert and into the Flinders Ranges on a spectacular 10 night journey. Uh, lake air is flooded at the moment, so we're not even sure we can do it. So I'm on high hopes and low lithiums. So <laughs> I'm doing these. So see you next week, guys. Bye. Uru. Bye.